Today we're taking a look at the optional wall mount kit for the Poly G40T Microsoft Teams room system. We'll be taking a look at the various components of the wall mount kit, how to put it all together, and then finally what the finished product looks like up on the wall behind us with the rest of the room system around it. The wall mount kit allows you to mount the compute for the Poly G40T up onto the wall with a cable management system, allowing all your cords to be neatly tucked inside and giving a neat, modern, sleek look to the conference room. Looking at our wall mount kit components, over here on the far left, we have the outside panel. This is the branded panel with the stylish design. This will be the panel that everybody sees mounted up on the wall. This is the back panel that will actually attach to the wall. You will attach the power supply cradle here as well as the actual compute. At the bottom of our screen here, we've got these rubber attachments that will go right into the back wall plate here. These obviously are for your cables. They will keep them neat and tidy and going into the proper places as they come into the wall mount kit. On the far right, we've got the cradle that holds the power supply and will be mounted to the inside of our wall mount plate. At the very back, we have all the different little screws and anchors and thumb screws and straps. Uh, this provides you options for either drilling right into something like a wood panel or using the anchors to anchor into a more traditional wall that you would find in an office. We've got the washers back there as well, thumb screws for helping to keep the um, cable, uh, the uh, power supply cradle in place. We've got the strap back there that'll allow you to get all the cords from the power supply wrapped up and kept up in a, a neat and tidy bunch. These larger screws right back here will be used to mount the front plate to the back plate. And then finally over on the far right, we've got the screws that keep this plate up into the wall or the anchors. Okay, the first step to getting this wall mount up on the wall is to actually attach the back panel to the wall itself. Now, if we were working on a traditional wall with your drywall and all that, we'd wanna make use of these plastic anchors as well as the screws to go into the plastic anchors. However, in our case, we are going to be attaching to this uh, pallet wood wall behind us here. So we don't really need the plastic anchors. We're just gonna be using regular screws. So what tools do we need to get this accomplished? We will need a power drill because sitting there and hand cranking a regular drill is very annoying. We'll want a level so that we can make sure that our um, back panel plate is going onto the wall straight, not crooked. That's just an eyesore everybody can see. If it's off just a little bit, you walk into that room and you'll see it. And then finally, we have a Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. You will also maybe need a pen or a pencil so that when you are lifting the plate up onto the wall, and there is a sign here that says up, telling us which direction to go, we'll be able to take the pencil, mark in the holes where we need to drill if we are going to be pre-drilling our holes. Now, I do wanna call out with this back panel, uh, you will wanna have the part that says up facing outward in case you get confused about which side goes up against the wall. We'll be using one of these screws to uh, drill through the hole up in the corner right there, not the far corner, that corner. And then of course, we'll be using a washer to make sure that the screw actually stays in place on the panel in the back. Okay, so here's the part where I need just a tad bit of imagination from you, the viewer. I do not have one of the components for the wall mounting kit in my possession at the moment. It is the PC holder, the metal bracket that attaches to this back plate and actually holds the PC in place. Uh, we would typically have four mounting screws that go up into these corners here. And once they're in place, we take the PC and slide it into the, uh, the holder itself. And then we use one of these screws right here, two of these actually, to attach the PC to the PC holder. Once the PC is firmly attached to the PC holder, we can take the PC holder and attach it to the, uh, the four mounting screws that we screwed into those four corners. 
and that keeps the PC in place. We're gonna go ahead and get to the power supply holder now. And as we put the rest of this together, again, use your imagination and act like we've got the PC holder in place there, uh, going off of that description that I just gave you. Okay, our next step is to take this power supply holder and insert the power supply itself. To do that, we are simply going to make sure that this side that has the two pieces here are on the right hand side and we will slide the power supply right in like so. You can see it fits in there like that. And we've got space for the cord to come out the, uh, the far right here. The power supply holder has two screws that you can see right at the top there. We are going to take those little notches and slide them in right down here you can see we've got the bigger hole. We put them in there and then slide it over to the left. Let's go ahead and attach that now. Now the power supply holder is in place and not falling down. To hold the power supply in place and make sure it doesn't slide back to the right, we need to use each of these and we will attach them to the bottom of the power supply holder uh, so that it does not move around. We can see that both of those are screwed in at the bottom and this is no longer sliding in any direction. Next step is to tidy up our cables. So we've got on the right hand side, the end of the power supply that will go into the Lenovo itself. This is not going to leave the wall mount. It should stay all up in there and we don't want cables hanging out the side. So we will get our cable all wrapped up nicely in a nice bundle and then we will use this provided strap to hold it securely in place, attaching it to the uh, little slot that we see right over at the right side of the power supply. Let's get that put together. Okay, as you'll notice, we now have our cables all bunched up. We've got that little cable wrapped up and it is attached through the slot that we previously viewed in the back panel itself. We've got enough cable hanging out the end here to come and plug into the end of the Lenovo PC that again will be mounted here uh, when you have the uh, Lenovo PC mount in place and attached. Now, as we are working without the PC mount for the moment, uh, for argument's sake, we're going to set this right here and pretend that we have it mounted in. It'll actually be placed a little higher about right here. Uh, with the mount. But this gives us enough space to attach our power right here. Everything stays nice and tucked in. And then we take these rubber mounts that we had earlier to put onto the side so that we keep all of our cables in place. One cable per slot. Let's get that in here. We will have one cable up top, one in the middle, and then one coming right out here. And again, we put the end of the rubber uh, cable management piece into the bigger end of the slot and slide it down to hold it in place nice and firmly. That puts all of our cables coming out the side. Just for reference, as we are putting this cable management piece in place, you'll notice that it is a knob at the end with a little slot right there and that knob goes into the larger hole of these slots and then slides down to keep it firmly in place. So let's go ahead and put our power cable up here. We'll have it coming out the middle. We will attach it, slide it down. Now the power cable is where it needs to be and not going anywhere. Now at the back of our front panel, we've got all these little uh, inserts here for the screws and we are going to be using this special spacer screw. You'll notice this end will go into the front plate itself, and this little notched end is actually gonna be the end that goes into another one of those slots on the back panel and slides down into place so that it's not moving around or falling off. Let's get these screwed in, all four corners, and then get it up on the uh, wall mount.
With each of those spacers in place, we can now put this up on the wall. Okay, we got our front plate and our spacers. Let's bring it up here, position it to fit into each of the slots. Takes a little bit of figuring. Moving our cables off to the side, we get a good view of what this thing looks like mounted up on the wall, cables coming out of the side neatly like they need to be. We can now run them either down the wall, bunch them all together, or have them tucked into the wall in some kind of instance. I just wanna briefly take a look at the side. You can see that our power cable is tucked in, not coming out the side, but we can see it right there. We've got the rubber cable management system that is holding each one in its place. We can then bunch them up or redirect them accordingly. And that's what it looks like from the side. And here we've got the entire room system final product. You'll see that we've got the studio on the left, our GC8 center of room touch controller in the middle of the table. We've got our display plugged in over on the very right. And then we've got our compute tucked neat and tidily into our wall mount at the very back with the cables running out the side. And I've even taken a nice little uh, cable sleeve to tie all four together and have them run down the wall in a uniform uh, manner. As you can see, the wall mount gives you the flexibility to still have a neat and tidy room system where your cables are all managed and tucked away and the compute is not one more device sitting on the table or on a shelf at the front of the room. And that was the optional wall mounting kit for the Poly G40T Microsoft Teams room system. For a complete overview of the Poly G40T system, please check out the link to the video up in the upper right hand corner of this video. And if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, there is a handy link right at the bottom of this video. And I would greatly appreciate you subscribing and maybe even sharing the video if you found it super helpful. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next how-to video.